Welcome everybody, it's Crafty Carol here with another Christmas countdown and um, this little project, when you actually see this, I shall be in Vienna because Stamping Up have got a wonderful meeting of all our European demonstrators and some from America and elsewhere, uh, coming all congregating in Vienna for a wonderful couple of days, um, learning about stamping, getting a sneak peek of the new catalogue and having a load of fun as well as meeting some old friends and making a lot of new ones. And one of the things we do when we go to these wonderful events is we take swaps for each other. So this today, our little project, is my swap for Vienna, which also will make a rather nice Christmas project. So these are the little um, the little gift boxes and um, everybody that receives one won't just get the little box with a little treat inside. I'll show you what I put inside in a minute, but they also get the little instruction sheet to show them how to make it. So little box I've designed myself just to fit these things. I'm going to move those to the side for a minute. And these are the bits you need. So really quite simple you need a piece of dsp that is six inches by five inches and we're going to do some scoring so if i can get this in and hopefully get it so that it's in shot yes so this is my scoreboard and i'm going to score on the long side that's the six inch side at half an inch so this is the half inch one and keep my fingers out of the way but keep the so that's a half inch, then we score it at one inch, at two and five eighths. So these little marks here are each an eighth of an inch, so that's two and four eighths, two and a half, two and five eighths is that one. Then I'm going to do it at three and three eighths, at five inches, and finally at five and a half inches. If you've got a directional paper, you want the direction going crosswise, to be honest, if you're going to make this. I've just used pattern paper, so it doesn't matter. On the other side, we're going to score at three quarters of an inch, the other way round. So you turn it through 90 degrees, score at three quarters of an inch and four and a quarter inches. And that is all the scoring you need to do. So let me move that out of the way and then I'll show you the cutting. So, as I say, I've already put out the, or given everybody that gets it, they're going to get a little um, picture of how to do it. This is also on my blog, so if you want to see that or, or print it off, you can go on the blog. So what we're going to do is we've got these two parallel lines that we've scored each side and one in from the side. And these last two blocks, if you like, we're going to cut them off on each corner. So we cut off this one, cutting carefully just to the right hand side of the score line you want to cut right into the score line if you like don't leave a funny little edge if you cut down if you cut down the, the rut if you like the actual deep bit of the score line it, it leaves a, a little bit sticking up at the edge which is odd so i cut to the edge of the edge of where the score line is i hope that makes some sense and um, if you're doing it yourself i think you'll see what i mean so we're going to cut off all of those four corners just neatly like that. It's ever so dull today. I hope, I hope the lighting is good enough that you can see this okay. It's really dull. Um, then these two centre score lines, these ones we did at two and five eighths and three and three eighths of an inch, we're just going to, on the side bits, we're just going to notch. So by that I mean we're just going to cut a very narrow little notch by cutting to one side of the score line and then to the other side of the score line, up to that next score line. And again, we're going to do this both sides. I am making so many of these, I'm getting very used to doing this. Um, I think I'm making, I think I've got 62 little biscuits, something like that, to um, put together. So I'm going to, I'm very good at making these now. <laughs> so the next stage, we are simply going to score all the lines, not score them, what am I talking about? We're going to fold all the lines. So um, I'm actually gonna start with these end ones. So when you get, to, so score the two middle ones, burnish the two middle ones. And then for these outside ones, you're going to fold in and then the final flap folds out. So you've got like a, 
V shape on each side. So same with the other end, we fold in and the final fold goes out. So that's the shape you get. And then we've got the side flaps, which we fold in like that. And then for the decoration to put it together, uh, to, to, for the glue to put it together, we only glue the side flaps, it's dead simple. So we're going to pull two of the flaps back because they're not going to have glue on. Then we're going to glue the two, each of the two inner flaps. So I'm going to put glue on the outside, the folded down bit of each of those flaps. And I discovered this to stop yourself having to fiddle to get these in the right order. If you just push those so they're upright, but leave these two folded in, it makes it far easier to then pull these bits together and stick them down because that little flap goes in between the other two. The key then is make sure these top, these the, at the top here, they're lined up and then just slide your little finger in to press them together to hold it. And you see how it's lined up at this, this edge. That's really important, yeah. And then the same for this side, you'll see that because of where we've left those flaps, they come together nicely. So we pull them together, make sure the tops are perfectly lined up, squeeze all the way down to glue. And that is the box. So you'll see at one edge, you can see the overlap. So the bit I want to call the front is the bit with no edge on the on the corner here, yeah? So that's going to be my front. And then it clo closes together really simply like that, simply with the glue dot. But I'm going to put the decorations on first. So what we need for the decorations, I've already stamped a little mini hello. And I have punched out with the Scotty Dog Punch, my Scotty Dog. And in the same punch, you can um, punch out a bow. So I've just done it in a bit of matching glitter paper, which is retired, but what the heck. And then I also have some retired glittery pink ribbon. And that's the thing I'm going to do the bow with. So to put it together to finish, really simple. First of all, we need to put what's inside. So I've used actually these Biscoffy biscuits, which I love. And hopefully the people who get it love it. And then my instruction sheet is also going to go inside. So they've got the measurements if they want to make them themselves. Because that's the whole point about these swaps. If we all swap things with each other, if I have 62 things to swap and I manage to swap all 62, I get 62 ideas back of things I can make. So that's a really good idea. I love the fact we do swaps. And it's great to get back to it because after COVID, we haven't had much time. So to finish putting this together, I really need to stick this on first so it doesn't fall off as I'm putting it together. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of my glittery bow and stick him whoops, to my dog, like a collar. There we go. And then I'm also going to stick my hello just in the middle at the top there. And I'm going to line it up with that top fold. So it sits just by that fold. There we go. So I've put in my biscuit and my, my um, instructions. So to hold it together, now you could actually use glue. It depends who you're giving it to. I want people to be able to open it to see what's in it, but also to be able to shut it again so that they can take it home and think about how to, to make it using my instructions. So all I'm doing is put, I'm putting a little glue dot in the middle at the top there. And then I'm being very careful to line up my top edges at both sides and then I can squeeze in the middle across the glue dot and that just holds it shut nicely. So then to finish off I'm going to put my, lost my dimensionals again, I don't know, I keep losing them today. All I'm going to do, one dimensional will actually hold this because there's no weight or anything on this. Plus if I'm making 62 I'm getting through a lot of dimensionals <laughs> and that just simply goes on the front like that. So I line up his paws with the bottom and have them sitting just above the bottom and where you can see the hello, which isn't terribly straight on that one, but it will do. And then I'm going to put a bow on and I'm going to just stick it down and make the bow and stick it with glue dots. Now you could, if you wanted, let's get my glue dot on there. There we go, ready for the bow. If you wanted, you actually could punch that and tie some ribbon through, but it's fiddly to tie the bow like that, to be honest. So I prefer to do my bow by making two little bunny ears, crossing them over, pass the first one through. Oh, so she struggling, of course, because we're doing this on camera and then pull. 
and then all I can do is just adjust the ends so I get the bow to the size I want. Just make sure it's tight and then using my ribbon scissors I can just trim that to the size I want and stick that on my box. So there we have it, there's another one done, another of my treat boxes. So I've got them in all sorts of different papers. You can see here, so there's just four different papers. I've got about six or seven papers I've used. These are all from the lovely Gingham set actually. Um, and I hope they're going to like them in Vienna. I'm pretty sure they will. So I hope you enjoy making these little gift bags. They'd hold things like mini Mars bars or um, little mini chocolate bars things like that, um, or anything else you want to put in them. So I hope you enjoyed that little project and I hope you have a go at it. Let me know how it goes. Bye for now.